Good evening, ECC ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to Cambodia Global Dialogue. Tonight we'll be talking about a subject that we have not touched since I had the show uh, for exactly two years ago. We talk a lot about economic issue, trade, uh, social issue, tourism, a bit of everything, but uh, science and technology, it's uh, something that somehow uh, either I was not able to find good speaker to come and have a dialogue with me or perhaps uh, because we are not there yet that's why it's so difficult to to have uh, this this sort of discussion on such a uh, sort of like scientific uh, team i have the pleasure to have uh, with me tonight uh, dr richie cham a Cambodian national long time ago uh, of course i'm not going to go over his background i will give him a chance later on but we'll be talking about the science and for development uh, professor cham is currently you know uh, working with the iaea um, but again anyway i'm going to ask dr cham to give you a background a bit and then we're going to talk about science for development why we have to promote science and then later on, how do we advance uh, science and technology? Uh, because uh, this subject is so important and yet still, you know, difficult to comprehend for those who are not in the scientific world. I'm going to do a long show and we're going to split into two shows. So you're going to be, uh, you're going to have to watch it uh, two weeks in a row. Dr. Cham. Oh, I call you Bangra T. But, uh, yes. So thank you very much, uh, Sipana. I'm grateful and I'm delighted to be here. Uh, let me introduce myself. So I'm a Cambodian. I left Cambodia with, with the last commercial flight in 1975 for France to study medicine. So I'm a doctor. And then I practice as an academic radiologist at Can Canadian universities for 15 years. I, was, I taught at McGill University, Western Ontario, and also five years in Singapore. Yes. I have a quite a, a diverse background, a triple background Beside being a physician, I'm a professional educationalist and a historian of medicine and a historian of science. But you, you, you have uh, two PhD on top of uh, your medical doctor. My son told me that in order to boost my self-esteem, I need three doctorate degrees. But uh, <laughs> more seriously, I did that as a, a journey for learning new things. Yes. Uh, so my um, uh, research on education was a, actually very relevant uh, to the region here mm. because it's about human capital yes. and uh, university in the ASEAN perspective. I see. And my dissertation in history was on the uh, um, Bud on Buddhist medicine mm. in the 13th century Cambodia under King Chayavan the Seventh. Wow. But this has been said. My, I think my interest, my passion, my professional love was for science. Yes. And it's interesting to be here. I'm glad that I, um, I can share some ideas uh, through the perspective of you, how some country use science and technology to boost their development, moving from a basic economic system uh, and to embrace the knowledge economy. But, uh, uh, Professor, um, you forgot to mention your current job. Now. Oh, uh, currently I'm a director of the Division of, the Division of Human Health at the International Atomic Energy Agency. But at the outset, I'm not here to represent the agency, yes. but as an independent scholar yes. for the entire education in this region. That's very good. Well, you know, you, you have such a broad spectrum of, uh, not just in medical field, but medical field linked to science. You know, to a lot of people, when you say, oh my God, I work for the IEA, the thing of uh, nuclear, in what they know, mm. nuclear bomb, nuclear energy, mm. something like this, but not many people realize that, you know, uh, nuclear science is not all about bomb. No, definitely not. Yes. You can use nuclear energy and atomic energy uh, in a much peaceful way. Yes. For example, right, a lot of people use uh, x-rays. You know, you go to the hospital, you cough, you have a chest x-ray. Yes. Yeah. You have a car accident, you do x-rays of the skull. Yes. You do a ultrasound for a, a baby, a yes. baby in, the, in the womb. Right? So all of this they tell you that atomic energy has been used in medicine actually long before it has been used for those uh, horrible things like uh, atomic bomb mm. and also much later uh, for the, uh, producing electricity. Yes. But they definitely, uh, you know, atomic energy saves lives in the field of medicine. Mm. Mm. 
you know, we speak about science or development. Uh, I would say that, you know, in 1993, after the Paris Peace Accord, you know, the, the big Washington consensus, mm -hmm. so all the development partners coming to help Cambodia. But in those days, it's all about rehabilitating our economy, you know, and uh, later on moving to development, sustainable development, infrastructure. But I don't think we are there yet in terms of moving the next nod into science and innovation, which I think it's so important, you know, to take the country uh, at the next level of, uh, I like to call, industrial and economic development. What, what, what do you think of that? Yeah, you're right. I think that, you know, I came back in Cambodia the first time, 1993, 94, and I was a little bit uh, uh, disappointed, but I think rightly the situation uh, of Cambodia doesn't allow to consider science, technology, innovation yes. as a motor for the economy, particularly for knowledge economy. Yes. But certainly now there's no question that uh, uh, science technology is here. You know, yes. that, and if this can be used in a policy to boost the economy and particularly to that, to embrace that uh, next stage, you know, which is what we call knowledge economy, mm -hmm. the, the quantum leap can happen. Yes. but can happen only yes. if you have people to do that. We got a lot of uh, foreign uh, um, science and technologies that are, can be used for mm. economic development. The question is how can a country like Cambodia yes. at this stage of development mm. you know, be ready to absorb yes. that technology and that science? But uh, you know, I think for, I would say in the last 10 years or so, say since we entered the WTO, the country opens up, there's a big flow of foreign direct investment. Uh, in the recent year, more than anything, uh, the, the Japanese are coming in a major way, you know, bringing new uh, technology in, in, the, in the industry, that sort of thing. And y you see how a consumer market, we are user technology, yeah. but we don't realize that behind the iPod, the Samsung Galaxy, mm -hmm. the iPad, everything, there are a whole stream of upstream technology. Yeah. So, so we use technology, but we don't know what's behind technology. Yeah. And that's fascinating because I, I look at the response of the young people in Cambodia. They are early adopter in technology. Uh, so, and you talk about Japan, you have Korea. If you look at their history of science technology, you know, the, those countries start from somewhere at this same phase as Cambodia some 50 years ago for Korea, for example. They didn't have much uh, a human resources, or not much technology. They come out from mm -hmm. war. Mm -hmm. And how you see how far, how fast actually yes. they have moved. It's because there, there was a clear um, national policy. Yes. Science technology was mm -hmm. a priority. Mm -hmm. And uh, you need, you know, in order to do that, you have to probably look at the culture and how in Cambodian society science is perceived yes. and it will come back to that uh, quickly yes, later yes. and two is the investment in that mm, yeah. mm. science technology need investment yes. it's not a cost if you see yes. it as a cost you won't go very far yes. uh, so let me share with you an anecdote um, okay uh, recently I met a, a young Cambodian girl she's 16 finishing high school with her parents uh, and the parents were looking for university for her. Mm, they, mm. they consider North American university, yes, like yes. many parents here. Okay. And the parents wish her, wishes her to study business because ah. business means go to directly to the marketplace. Yes. But the the young lady was so smart. When I mm. talked to her, she said, "You know, Uncle, I'm interested in in science mm. and particularly in biology." Mm. So I probe her and realized that actually her love is for science, not mm. for business. Yes. And by after a discussion of science, you know, I just send a message to her that you know I'm a scientist and science is fun. Science mm. can improve people's life, mm. can uh, um, create wealth, mm -hmm. and then uh, suddenly the parents were much more open, and mm. finally they decide that they mm. maybe the daughter should uh, embrace a, a, mm. a biology, and she will on uh, out following a discuss discussion, mm. she decided mm. she's going to apply for a Canadian American university in order to study biochemistry. Mm. So if you have a young Cambodian girl mm. at 16 mm. who mm. wish to study biochemistry, mm. I think the future is bright for our country. Yes. I, I think, you know, like any post-crisis country and Cambodia is no different. Mm. There are a certain path, you know, and uh, you mentioned the, the word which I like, which is skipping the learning curve, quantum leap. 
you know, at, at some point, you know, you cannot do without, you know, that uh, science and technology. But to get to that level, right, yeah. I think uh, you, you have to see the progression of the country uh, development. I think we, after 20 years since the Paris Peace Accord, I would say we sort of flipped the page. Yeah. We, we're a normal country now. In a few years' time, we'll graduate from the status of a least developed country. Yeah. We're going to be classified as a lower middle income yeah. country. And this is where I see that, you know, how do we now use science technology? How do we promote science technology as a source of growth? A way to compete. Yeah. You know, because country don't really yeah. compete. Yeah. It's the industry that compete. Yeah. It's the company that compete. Mm -hmm. But without the adequate, yeah. you know, qualify, you know, people, you know, for example, eventually we're gonna uh, develop our oil and gas. Mm -hmm. Where do you think we're gonna get the uh, engineer mm -hmm. who's gonna be working on the platform, for example? Yeah. And I mean, uh, example you mentioned, Korea, yeah. and Japan. Please. Yeah, definitely. You know, the, there are signs everywhere. We live in a very technological society everywhere in the world, whether you're in a poor yes. or rich country. Yes. The, the globalization is there. It's a, a information technology allows you to communicate all the young people. I met many students here, mm. hundreds of students. They all have iPad, iPod connecting mm. through, the, through internet, yes. social media. So they are aware of that. Mm. But a science is about a culture. Yes. And, uh, if you don't value science, mm. you don't value scientists, scientists are not recognized, it's yes. difficult to promote that. Uh, you mentioned oil and gas, you know, you need uh, a chemist yes. to work on petrochemistry, mm -hmm. you need geologists, and all these are very exciting, you know, mm. it's, it's a new field, and in order to encourage our, our young people mm. to embrace science, yeah, you need to maybe scientists as a model, and then mm. maybe uh, you know, looking at promoting science at the national level is important because yes. if scientists are not respected, are mm. not valued, mm. uh, the profession of a scientist and engineer, mm. and when, when, when I mean by scientist, science, I mean science technology, you know, mm. engineers, technicians, we yes. need those professionals at all levels mm. uh, of a scale of how to produce a, a wealth using science and technology. Any example you can cite, uh, say for example, uh, some of uh, best practice in some government who use, uh, who give the, the credit to science, you know, appointing a science academy or an advisor or something, yeah. say any particular reference? Uh, so to answer your question, there are examples and the most relevant example to Cambodia are Japan and South Korea. You know? For example, Japan in the mid-19th century, uh, the government decided that they should have a different approach mm. to, to, to the, for the country in order to develop and taking Western models. So mm. they embrace a uh, Western science because they see that they are they have they rule the world with science and technology. Mm -hmm. uh, so they decide to invest uh, heavily on training uh, uh, physician, physicists, chemists, uh, scientists, mm. engineer. And South Korea is another example. Fifty years ago, South Korea was you know ruined by war, mm -hmm. a poor in human resources, the science technology non-existing. Mm -hmm. But by that time, uh, the government and strong leaders with the vision decided that they should embrace science technology, invest in that. And you see where is uh, South Korea now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And on the other hand, not only science allow you to boost your economy, particularly in the context of knowledge economy, Let's not forget that knowledge will never be depleted. Mm -hmm. The yes. more educated people you have yes. in general education, in science, yes. the more knowledge you're going to produce. Mm. And if you use other resources for the country, you know, land, natural resources, one day you're going to be depleted. Yes. You're, going to be, you're going to be stuck. You cannot go to the next step. But knowledge will boost that. And, and you see, like, near to us here, near, just nearby, mm. Singapore, mm. small country with no natural resources, but their only resources is human brain. So yes. we invest in science and technology heavily. I have been witnessing that because I taught there for five years, about um, ten years ago. Mm. And I saw that there is a very clear policy and the government of Singapore decided that science and technology should be the priority mm. and they invested in life science. Ten years later, what do you see? You look at all the indicators, the number of Scientists going to work in mm. Singapore mm. doing research there yes. is increasing. Mm. The number of scientific paper is increasing, and we have a 
in general in looking at the role of science yeah. in economic development yes. we have one kind of measure different indicators yes and one of the main parameters is the number of scientists mm. and the number in engineer of engineers per million of population so if you calculate that look at the number i don't have the data from yeah. cambodia and if it is low uh, then it's maybe it's time to address that mm. well i think the the country now is a, the government is in the process to uh, prepare you know a vision 2030 so we give ourselves another 15 years and in that vision 2030 we are looking what do we want a Cambodia by two, 2030 right mm -hmm. and for sure I mean this is an opportunity to you know, inject this notion of science technology so that by then mm -hmm. you know let's face it uh, in a near much near term we're talking about three years from now 2015 Cambodia is part of the ASEAN economic community, mm -hmm. free flow of people, free flow of goods, free flow of service. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of competitive pressure mm -hmm. for the country to sustain, yeah. you know, uh, I would say competition. Mm -hmm. Because let's face it, we may be an economic grouping, mm -hmm. but each country are, are, are trying to attract uh, foreign direct investment, skill, everything mm -hmm. to uh, uh, each respective country and you cannot blame them for that, right? So the trick is how do we also position that Cambodia would have that pool in the future of young, capable technician, engineer that can be part of this production chain. Yeah. Yeah. So you see, I'm not an expert in policy uh, making, yes. but from the perspective of an academics, uh, the, 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 principles are, the principles are quite simple, actually. Yes. The, 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 the challenge is how to transform these principles uh, a, into a policy that is effective. Yes. I, first, in order to have a pool, in order to be effective, you have, let's say, three or four main players. Certainly, the top policy maker, you mm -hmm. need a visionary and strong leadership to yes. move toward that. A, number two, the industry that is a, now emerging, yes. but I'm not talking about basic, uh, mm -hmm. but the advanced technologies, yes. the, uh, in this uh, industry using advanced technology, yes. they're hesitant to come because I, I heard from many uh, 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 various sources that they have a problem finding the right engineers and yes. technologists yes. and the third uh, group will be universities mm. that and that will be uh, something that I like to say you know? mm. uh, if you look at different uh, countries at different level of a uh, uh, development the main issue is that in most countries the developing uh, with exception of Singapore for example mm. or mm. South Korea that pe university uh, train people mostly in a non science non-science discipline. Why? Because the investment is, is, low, is low and because universities are for profit. Yes. Nothing wrong with that. Yes, yes. Uh, that investment is not there. Yes. I say if investment in science education is not there, then there's a huge cost in the future yes, yes. to pay. You know, <laughs> speaking of that, I, I must say that, uh, mm. uh, you, you know, when professor or dean of uh, different school meet each other, they say that, look, you know, uh, the the dean that always have a, a lot more praise yeah. is the dean of law school. Yeah. You know why? Because he bring more money yeah. to the university. Yeah. Because uh, in law school yeah. you buy books. Yeah. And at most nowadays, you know, all is everything is online. But yeah. you you don't need to invest in multi-million dollar equipment yeah. Yeah. in laboratory or, you know, the, that a, mm -hmm. a dean of engineering school or dean of yeah. medical school yeah. have to do see so so indeed it, it's clear that you know uh, you know looking to the future building on the, the foundation that yeah. we have built so far yeah. I would say Cambodia is prime now but the point is, is how do we now start to structure a policy that will give clear priority that science and technology will be you know, uh, uh, the focus of, the, of this uh, uh, country. Uh, Professor, I think we're running out of time for the first part. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's your message on this, on, on, on this science uh, for development? What's your message for this first part? And the second part, we're going to move into, yeah. you know, how do we advance uh, science education? Yeah. In short, my message is very simple, that science is about an attitude. Mm. It's about culture. And if you want to promote science, to advance science, particularly among the next generation, the young people, you have to show that science is fun, is exciting, and science is useful for building, uh, for building, uh, creating wealth, mm. and also that uh, 
a, 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 a young a young person who embrace science as a as a career mm. has a prospect for future. Mm. So a, you need probably to promote the image of a scientist also mm. because if scientists are not valued in society, mm. no no single young person will embrace science. So mm. science, I think, it, it particularly it saves life. Science can be uh, can promote. Um, a quality of life can can foster a development hmm. that is based on knowledge because knowledge will never deplete it. So that my message is that we should be going and we have no choice but embracing knowledge economy. So the next, the quantum leap will be to build a pool of scientists, engineers, and technicians. Good. Well, uh, Professor, I think we going to bring to a close the first part of it and then later on when we restart we'll be talking about how to advance uh, science and technology education but let me just wrap up for the show and then uh, we, we can go from there so ladies and gentlemen we we have a quick uh, blip of this larger spectrum of uh, science for development, science, technology. But one thing I, I retain from Professor Chen, uh, uh, sort of like uh, exchange, is that, you know, you, to advance to the next step, you, in, the, in terms of economic development and prosperity, you have to have science uh, as part of your uh, development policy. Uh, even though he stressed that he's not much into policy, but as a practitioner, you, one can say that uh, if you look at the country like Japan and Korea, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, even further than that, you know, they have embraced that as a policy. Uh, in Cambodia, I'm optimistic that, you know, in, the, in our vision 2030, which the government is currently working on, we are also embracing science, technology, industrial and industry policy as part of our uh, development uh, pattern. So on that note, uh, I want to say good night and I'll see you next week.